The next step in development is user registration. So what do we need to register users from our REST API? Well, we need their email, we need their username, and then we need two passwords. So we need their password and then to confirm that password. And uh, so basically we wanna be able to do this with Postman. We wanna be able to send a post request to our IP, which is uh, currently our development environment is this right here. So I'm just copying that and I'm pasting it in. So it, it might look something like API account slash register. That's what we expect the URL to be once we're done building it. Of course, I haven't built that yet, so we uh, we still need to do that. But we're gonna also need some body parameters. So we need the email, we'll need the username, and we'll need two passwords. So it'll be password, password number one, and then either something like confirm password, so confirm underscore password, or just password number two, or password two, which is what we're going to be doing. So we need to build the serializer for this, we need to build the view for this, and then we need to add this to urls.py. All right, so staying consistent with what we've done before, I'm gonna go into the account app and I'm going to create a new folder. This is gonna be called API, just like we did in blog. We have that new API folder for all of like the rest API stuff. And inside, inside API, I need to first create a Python init file. So underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, dot py. Nothing needs to go in here. It just needs to go inside of the directory. Now I'm going to create three new files. One will be serialize, serializers.py. One will be, uh, it'll be views.py. And then the third one is going to be urls.py. So the exact same kind of thing that we did in the blogging API directory here. We have init, serializers, URLs, and views. And now we will do the same sort of process. We're going to start by building the serializer, then build the view, and then build the URL. So let's go into the serializer file for the blog app. And I'm actually going to copy this whole thing because a lot of it's going to be very similar. So I'm pasting that into the new serializers file, and we need to change a few things. So from account.models, I want to import account. This is going to be registration serializer. So registration serializer. Once again, we are going to use a model serializer since it comes kind of uh, with a bunch of stuff prepackaged to make our lives a little easier. Um, the only thing that's different is going to be this new password field. So I need to add a password field up here because it's uh, password number two is not part of the account model. So remember, we're we're modeling it the serializer after the, after a certain after a certain object in our Django on our Django website, but of course it doesn't have a secondary password field, so we need to create that manually. So I'm going to go serializers dot character field, character field uh, style equals, and this is some this is some extra styling that I'm adding because it's a password field. I need to set an input type of password, so password. That way the field will be hidden from the user. So uh, when it get when it gets passed through the request, it's going to be like an encrypted field, so people can't just read that, obviously. And it's going to be a write-only field equal to true. That way, people can't read it, like I said. Now let's go down to our fields. So we need the email, we need the username, we need password number one, so that's just going to be password, and we need password number two. So let's delete that and password two. So that's it for our fields. Now the next step is also something different from the previous serializer. I need to create a extra keyword argument field here. So extra key keyword args, and this is gonna be password colon, and I wanna do the same thing that I did up here. So I'm telling it that this is a write only field. So write only and set that equal to true. And again, this is for security. We don't want people to be able to read this field or this field when it get, gets passed through the request to the server. So we're saying write only to hide the password field and write only here to hide the password number two field. Now, the last step in our serializer is something, again, oh, I need to fix all this spacing. So uh, I, I'm sure you already know this about Django by now, but if you have different or it's actually a Python thing. If you have a different spacing leading up to the different lines in, in something that you're declaring, this is a problem. So these are actually, so if I press delete, you can see that there's a whole bunch of spaces that get delete. So it's actually the space bar, but here is a tab. So they all need to match. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight all of these things. I'm gonna tab them in by pressing shift tab. Now I'm gonna fix the indentation. So I'm tabbing these in. Everything is going to have tabs. That should be good. So now if I highlight this, all of the white space is the same. It's all tabs. 
So now, now, as I was saying, the last thing we're going to do that's different from this serializer compared to the other serializer that we built is we're going to override one of its methods. And we need to override one of its methods because before we save this new user that we're regist registering to the server, we need to make sure that the two passwords match. So password number two and password number one. So I'm going to define a new method. We're overriding the save method. And I want to get the account first of all. So I'm creating a new account. So a new new user account, I'm going to say the email is equal to self dot validated data. So remember, if you're working with Django forms, you're working with validated data, it's very similar with serializers, it's the same sort of thing. That's why I said in the one of the previous videos, to think of serializers sort of like Django forms, they're very similar, it's kind of like the form for the REST API. So once basically once, um, actually, I'll show you a comparison. So if we go into blog views, and we go down to let's say the update blog view. So remember with the serializer, we check to see if it's valid, and then we saved it. So this is the same kind of thing that we're going to do when we're registering a user we're going to check that it's valid and then we're going to save it. So this validated data becomes available after you check if it's valid and then you're going to save. So that's how I'm getting this validated data. If you don't check that it's valid, then you aren't able to get the validated data. So just keep that in mind and I'll, I'll remind you again when we take a look at the view and we actually build the view. Now let's get the passwords. So self.validated data again, this is going to be password number one. Then let's go to the next line and password number two is going to be self-validated data password two, whoops. Okay, so now that we have the password number one, password number two, we want to say if password number one does not equal password number two, then we know we have a problem and we can raise a serializer error. So serializers dot validation error, and I can pass what I want that validation error to say. So I'm going to say it's going to be on the password field. So this is it's going to return some JSON data. Basically, I'll pull up a notepad file just so you can see what it's going to look like. You can see kind of a demonstration. So this serializer, I'll type it out and then I'll, I'll show you what it's going to look like. So passwords must match is what, will, what it will say with a period. So what's that going to look like if the passwords don't match? It will return a JSON object uh, through the response and it'll say password, uh, passwords must match. That's what it'll look like. And that's that's what this validation error is right here. So just kind of a heads up for what that's going to look like, but we'll we'll test all that later. So you'll see it actually in action. Now that we have the password and we know that it is they are the same, we can do account dot set password, set that to the first password and then account dot save. It's very important that you call account dot save if you are overriding the save method, because otherwise it won't save because right if we call save in our view, this method is going to get called and the the actual save method will not get called and it won't get saved to the database. So very important that you do that. And then I just want to return the account. So there we go. That is our registration serializer. Now we're ready to move on to the view. So we're going into views.py for the account API class. And I'm going to go into the blog views and I'm going to copy a bunch of things because a lot of it, a lot of this is going to be similar. So I'm copying these three imports, the status response and API view. I'm going to paste those above and I need to import. So from account.api.serializers, I want to import that registration serializer that we just built. And now we're ready to build that view. So just like the other views that we built in the blogging API section, we want to annotate this with at API view to restrict the, the type of request that can be made on this view. This is going to be a post request. Now I want to define registration view, it's going to take in the request. And now I can check for if the request equals post. Again, I don't think you have to do this. I just it's just kind of a habit of mine. I just do it because technically you're checking for the post request up here in the API view annotation. But you know, I do it anyway, it's not going to hurt. So let's just let's just write it out. Next, I'm going to define the serializer. So serializer equals registration serializer, the data for the serializer equals request dot data. Uh, I'm going to define a data object that we're going to return to the view once everything's done, just like we did before. And next, I'm going to check if the serializer is valid. So if serializer is valid. So now if it's valid, remember, we have access to this validated data. So remember, just checking if it's valid, that means we have access to the validated data, just like with Django forms. Now, 
Now I want to get the account. So I'm doing serializer.save. Remember, that's going to call this overrided save method that we just built. That will confirm that the passwords match. If they do match, it will set the password. It will save that new account to the database, and then it's going to return that account. So that's how I'm getting access to that account object right there. Now I want to return a response to the user letting them know what happened. So I'm going to do data response equals you know successfully registered uh, new user uh, and then I can actually copy that line because that'll make things a little easier this one's gonna be email and it can return the user's email so I can just do account dot email and I can copy that line again I can return their username do account dot username uh, and obviously I don't want to return their password so I'm gonna stop there Otherwise, I want to do data equals serializer dot errors. So this this will return that that uh, error here if it was raised. So if there was a validation error, it'll say passwords must must match. It'll get set to the data variable here, and then I will return that response and pass the data. So there's our registration view. Creating the serializer, checking if it's valid, saving it, which will call the overrided save method, which will check to see if the passwords match. If they match, we'll return this successful response. If they don't, then it will return the errors, and it will return it through the response object, or the response um, function. So now let's go into urls.py inside of our API view. So from django.urls import path, and I could have copied this from the other URLs file, but there's not really that much to write in, so I'm just going to write it out. From account.api.views, I want to import some stuff. I just have one view right now, but there's going to be more. So registration view is the first one. And now I want to set the app name. We must do this if we're extending the URLs file. Now URL patterns equals square brackets. And the first one is path. This will be register. I'll do registration view. And the name is equal to, whoops, not app name, just name equal to register. So that should be good. I could add a comma there. And the last step now is going to be going into the main URLs file. So going into my site and telling it to include these new URLs. So I'm copying that under my REST framework URL section here. This is going to be API slash account. This will be account.api.urls. And this will be account underscore API. And that should be good. I'm pressing Control S. I'm going to bring up my development server. Actually, I don't need the development server. I need Postman. So we're going to Postman. We have the IP here. We have slash API slash account slash register. Now let's enter some, some new stuff. So actually, I will bring up the development server and just show you that uh, there is not... I'm going to be registering a new user. So let's go to admin, check the accounts that are here. There's just Jessica, Mitch, and Mitchell Tabian at gmail.com. So let's create a test email. Let's do like test email at tabian.com. The username will be testing email. Password will be password. And the second password will also be password. I don't think that it will let me register. Actually, let's let's check to see what it looks like when you try to register passwords that don't match. So let's do that. Passwords must must match. That's good. Let's try it with that password. Successfully registered a new user. Cool. So now let's see what happens when we try to register a user that is already part of the uh, part of the database or in the database. So there's an email that already exists. Account with this email already exists. Account with this username already exists. That shouldn't have printed, but it, it is supposed to print the email, so that's fine. Let's try with a different email. So an email that doesn't exist, but a username that does exist. Account with that username already exists. Cool. So it looks like everything is working as it's supposed to. We can just double check to make sure that user was registered. And there it is right there. Test email. So everything's working as it's supposed to. All right, so everything at this point is working as we expect. We're able to register new users. Now we're ready to move on to generating authentication tokens. Because remember, later on in this course, that's how we're going to authenticate users when other technologies try to interact with the website. They need an, a unique authentication token that they can attach to the header of the request. So we need a way to generate those tokens. So that's what we're going to work on in the next video.